Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part four of my web design and programming tutorial. I've actually been receiving a lot of emails, and in this tutorial, I'm going to specifically cover arrays, and I'm going to continue to also cover arrays in the next tutorial. But a lot of you guys have been saying, what is the ultimate goal of this tutorial? Well, the ultimate goal is to teach you enough about web design and programming that you'll be able to create a custom WordPress news theme that will also contain a PHP WordPress plugin that will automate the whole entire process of posting. This is something that a lot of you guys have been asking for and by the end of this tutorial you will know piece by piece how to create such a tool and a lot of other things are going to be taught like PHP security and so forth and so on so that your site doesn't get hacked. Either way, an array to make it real simple is just a great big giant box that has a bunch of little boxes inside of it. By default the key that is going to represent the value in each of these boxes or you could consider or look upon this key as a label for the small box inside of the big array box is by default going to be using an index meaning a number starting at zero then going to one two three four five and upwards from there. This array can contain any type of information, be it a string, a number, or even another array or a boolean value. It can pretty much contain anything that you'd want to contain inside of it. Now, of course, you do not need to use the default index, but you could use real keys that would help you find the information inside of your arrays. And then you have multi-dimensional arrays, and this is just a bunch of arrays inside of an array. So you could think of this as one big giant box that makes up the array, and then it contains additional arrays and these would be the default indexes for all these little boxes inside of the multi-dimensional array. So now I'm going to show you some code examples. Not going to be using any type of form information. I'm going to focus totally on arrays here and this is how you would create a basic array. I'm going to create one called my info and then you would follow that with the array name and you do need this. Here I'm creating a key and I want to associate a value with it which is going to be my name. So the key is name and the value associated with it is Derek which is my name. Then I'm going to create another one. This is an equal sign and then a closing caret bracket here and I'm going to associate with this a street and then create city is equal to Okay, so there we are. We created a basic array. Now, if I want to get uh, the value by calling for the key associated with it, it's real simple. Just echo to screen. I can say my name is comma my info, and then just call for using the key to make sure use the uppercase for name here, and then a closing bracket for that. And I'm going to throw some breaks in here. If you didn't see the other tutorials, you've probably stopped watching this video, but either way, you should definitely watch those because then you will know what I'm doing. Okay, now we want to close this out over here. And if we save this and then jump in here and reload it, you know, see my name is Derek pops up on the screen. My name is, and it pulled in the value associated with this array that has the key name. And as you can see, that's exactly what it printed over here to screen. Let's say we want to create another array called more information. Again, make a call to the array function to create this array. And let's say I define state. And then you see there I put in a regular integer. I don't surround it with quotes. And then let's say that I want to merge these two arrays. How do I do that? Well, let's just say I want to merge them and then merge my info with the array called more info and then store it back inside of the array called my information. In essence, writing over it. I call a method or a function called array merge and then I place inside of here the two arrays I want to merge. That's it. An array merge is not a function that I created. This is a real PHP function that allows you to merge those. Then let's say I want to iterate through the array. Well, it's real simple. I just use the for each looping device. You've not seen this before. To use it, you just type for each and then you type in the name of the array you want to cycle through as and if you do this it's going to automatically assign the key to the variable key and it's going to assign the value that is associated with that key as it's iterating through to the variable called value and then open in curly brace and if I echo this out to screen close in curly brace and as I like to do I'm going to put these breaks in here and if we save that and then jump over and run it, you can see it prints out my, the key associated and the value to screen, actually. 
Let's increase the size. So there's the key, and then there is the actual value associated, and it continues to print those out, and it's printing that out based off of this echo right here. So it automatically, as it's cycling through the array my info, it's associating a key and a value. And you can also see here that I was able to merge using the array merge function, state and PA, and age and 35. Well, let's say you wanted to search for a specific key inside of array. How would you do that? Well, here I'm going to use the if statement and then make a call to array key exists. Again, this is a function built into PHP and I'm going to look specifically for a key called name in the array my info. And if it's found, I'm going to echo to the screen name stored associated with the name key is, and I'm going to follow that with my info like that. Save it. Reload. The name stored is Derek. See, it automatically pulls over the value stored associated with the key name and prints it out to screen. So that's a function that does that for you. And if you wanted to search for a value inside of an array, I'm going to show you another neat little function here as well. Like let's say city search is equal to use the array search method or function and if I'm looking for the specific value of Pittsburgh in the array called my info, echo to screen, city search, and reload. And the key for the city that I sent, being Pittsburgh, is city. Okay, so that's how you would look up the key associated with a value inside of an array. And if I wanted to print out all of the keys for any array, you have to use a new function that you've never seen before, which is print underscore r. And all this does is it prints out arrays in a human readable format. If you tried to print out this information using the echo or the regular print function, it would just print array to the screen and some kind of random numbers. But if we use print R, it's going to actually print out some information that makes some sense. Again, I'm going to call another method called array keys. And don't try to memorize all this. I'm going to give you a ton of examples. I just want to sort of get you in the rhythm of understanding how PHP works. So don't by any means think you have to memorize all of these different methods. Over time, you're going to get them ingrained in your head. You're going to learn best how to program through experience and not through just random trying to memorize things. It's probably one of the biggest problems with people trying to learn how to program. If I run this, you can see it printed out all of the indexes associated with the key that would then be associated with those values inside of array my info. Again, it's going to store everything by default with the numbers starting with 0 to 1. So you can see that is right there. And if I wanted to print out all of the values associated with an array. I'm going to call the print r function again, and I would call for array values. So you can see if you want the array keys, type in array underscore keys. If you want the values, array underscore values. I'm going to show you here in a minute different ways to pull this information in piecemeal so that you can use it a little bit more easy. Save it, reload, and now what you're getting here is the values associated with each of the indexes inside of the arrays. Well, another question you probably have is how do you create a multi-dimensional array? Remember, multi-dimensional array. It's just a bunch, like just think of this as an array, an array, an array, an array, and it's no different here. So instead of it just having my name, Derek, it might have Sally and Sue, followed by a, another street address, and so forth and so on. It's not that complicated. So let's create a multi-dimensional array. Let's say we create one called customer1 is equal to array, and then we'll say name. Actually, I'm going to jump up here and copy this code up here, make my life a little simpler. Then I just have to change this information. So we'll say, we'll just leave that the same, and create customer2 equal to array paste and we'll just say this is Sally and she lives at 23 Main and we'll just say she lives in Pittsburgh. So here I created two arrays and let's say we want to combine them into one giant. Right, it's not exactly giant but one, and then another array which would make it a multi-dimensional array. All that I need to do is call the array function customer1 customer2. That's it. That's going to create a new array called customers and it's going to have both of these arrays stored inside of it. And if I want to call the print R function, array underscore values, because I want the values and not the keys. Also put that parentheses right there. And then print out customers. Save it. 
jump over here, reload it, and you can see that it printed out all of the values, and there's the keys associated with those values that are stored inside of this new array called customers here to the screen. And then finally, I'm gonna show you this in a more usable manner. I'm gonna show you the for each looping method here. I'm gonna call for all the keys in, that are stored inside of the array called customer and then open in curly brace. And then I'm gonna call for each again, keys as, and I'm gonna say I want, see, you can use key two, you can use anything in there. These values don't have any meaning. I'm just using keys and values so that it kind of makes more sense more than anything else. Value, and then this is gonna allow me to cycle through the keys and the values that are each stored inside of those arrays that are inside of the array for customers. So, key two value. And then close off this curly brace and then close off this curly brace. Jump up here, type in customers, save it, and then reload it. You can see that it printed out both the key being name and the value being my first name, Derek, for each of those arrays. And if you would store additional customers inside of this array, it would continue to print out the key followed by the value associated with it. In the next tutorial, I'm gonna show you even more ways to pull out just individual pieces of these arrays so that you can work with them on an individual basis, which is what you're going to be more used to and what is gonna be more useful for you. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below. Otherwise, till next time.